Good afternoon. Welcome to Edusat Network. Friend, as you know, to, uh, we are discussing uh, software uh, and the use of software in the research methods and how we can uh, do a data analysis and tabulation, modeling, etc. using the uh, recent uh, the latest software available in the markets or uh, for the purpose of research. Uh, yesterday and day before, we uh, discussed uh, um, uh, research using the Excel thread. Excel sheet and then we move to the uh, SPSS and today we will move further on uh, SPSS and we will try to understand the factor analysis and determinant analysis. And for discussion on this very topic we have in the studio the same resource person Dr. Asif Jameer. He is a associate professor one of the leading management institute in Delhi and has experience of uh, about uh, 20 years of uh, both the world academic as well as in and corporate world, so his knowledge and experience will help us to understand this topic in a new way and will give a new understanding on factor analysis and determinant analysis uh, in the software uh, SPSS. So, on your behalf, I welcome Dr. Jamil for his lecture. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Amrinder. First of all, I wish to express my gratitude to CEC for calling me again for this session. Uh, today, I will talk to the audience about using SPSS and then doing factor analysis through SPSS. Yesterday in this sa same session we talked about using SPSS for techniques like single t-test, single sample t-test, paired sample t-test and independent t-test. Uh, I will I have changed the modality of my session today where I will start with an example. First show how the factor analysis is done through SPSS and then I will explain the concepts and the theory behind it. So, let us not waste any time and let us go get going with our session today. Factor analysis and this is the agenda for my discussion if I can have the screenshot where overview will be given some basic concepts of factor analysis will be told. Then the modeling will be done through factor analysis and then the statistics or the explanation of the output of factor analysis will be taken. Uh, I had some discussion yesterday also about factor analysis. It is essentially a data reduction technique. What happens is any researcher when he is embarking on any research does lot of literature review, builds up a very comprehensive list of decision elements and then goes to the market, collects data on them from respondents. Especially if I look at marketing research, people want to find about uh, consumer decision making and they test the consumers on many elements which they believe are relevant. While the consumers uh, do not think about so many elements while taking a decision. So, uh, that is where factor analysis comes into picture. For example, I want to uh, understand why people are buying a particular model of cars. And I have a 20, 30, 40 elements which I have extracted from literature, from previous research, I talked to experts and then when I have got this list of 30, 40 questions, I make a questionnaire and go to the consumers who have been buying, buying cars or who are interested in buying cars and I, and I take their opinion on all these 40 elements. But then doing anything relevant on those 40 elements is really not practical for a company or even for a management consultant. So, what happens is after taking this data I have to reduce it through factor analysis. Factor analysis helps me to first reduce the data, second identify the most important elements which consumers are taking care of while buying a car. So, this is what factor analysis does. Uh, if I can uh, show the slide, factor analysis is a general name for a class of procedures primarily used for data reduction and summarization. It is an interdependence technique. What happens is that many techniques in research like discriminant analysis, regression analysis, correlation analysis talk about a relationship between a dependent and a independent variables. While factor analysis does not categorize differences between dependent and independent variables. It is an interdependence technique. Entire set of interdependent relations is examined without making this distinction. What does it give to me. 
factor analysis allows us to identify underlying dimensions of factors that explain the correlations among a set of variables. So, from probably 30, 40 variables, I might end up at 7 or 8 factors which a consumer is understanding and taking care of. And then these factors become very manageable for me if I am trying to sell a car to, uh, to play with and to, to strategize and bring it into my strategy. Second uh, aspect of factor analysis is identify a new a smaller set of uncorrelated variables. The factors which are now emerging are consistent within themselves but are not correlated to each other so that they are able to replace the original set of correlated variables in subsequent multivariate analysis. For example, after doing this factor analysis, I can then go into any multivariate analysis like regression or discriminant and then the, the equation will have limited number of variables which will make it much more easier and simpler for me to understand what is happening in research. And third is identify a smaller set of salient variables from a larger set of for use in subsequent multivariate analysis and find which are the most important out of those 30, 40 variables which customers are really bothered about. I'll straight away go to an example. If I can have the screenshots. Okay, this is an example. A two wheeler manufacturer is interested in determining which variables his potential customers think about when they consider buying two wheelers. 20 two wheeler owners were surveyed by this manufacturer. They were asked to indicate on a seven point scale. One is completely agree to seven completely disagree. Their agreements or disagreements with a set of 10 decision statements relating to their perceptions and their and the attributes of two wheelers. Now, what those 10 statements are? These 10 statements are the decision variables. I use a two wheeler because it is affordable. It gives me a sense of freedom to own a two wheeler. Low maintenance cost makes a two wheeler very economical in the long run. A two wheeler is essentially a man's vehicle. I feel very powerful when I am on my two wheeler. Some of my friends who don't have their own vehicle are jealous of me. I feel good whenever I see the ad for my two wheeler on a television or any magazine. My vehicle gives me a comfortable ride. I think two wheelers are a safe way to travel. Three people should be legally allowed to travel on a two wheeler. Now, I have taken or this manufacturer has taken this data perception of 20 respondents on these 10 variables. The answer given by these 20 variables, 20 respondents on the scale are now shown in this table. So, all the variables are listed in top of the columns, 10 variables or 10 statements and all the rows, 20 rows are the responses given by 20 different customers. And for example, number one customer has given one out of seven to variable number one, four out of seven for variable number two, one out of seven for variable, variable number three and so on and so forth. So, all 20 responses have been fitted into this table. Now, I will go to SPSS to do factor analysis. Before embarking on factor analysis, the audience must understand two things. Factor analysis will be should be done when at least some of these variables are correlated. If all those variables are completely different from each other, then factor analysis will give no result because those 10 variables will come out as 10 different factors. So, it is necessary first to understand whether there was some correlation existing between at least some of the variables so that they can be clubbed into one factor. Second, it is advisable that the number of responses should be 4 to 5 times the number of variables. Now, in this particular example, we have seen that the number of variables are 10 while the responses are 20 which is only twice. So, I have to first do some statistics to understand whether factor analysis is applicable and is acceptable. So, considering these two things in mind, now I go to inputting this data into 
an SPSS file. In my session yesterday, I told the audience about how to create an SPSS file. For the sake of people who have joined only today, I will just recap some of those points. An SPSS file looks like a spreadsheet and it has got two buttons at the left hand corner. One is variable view and one is data view. First we go to variable view to define the variables. Now let us go to the first column, first row sorry of this sheet. The name of the variable I have given is x1. This is the first variable in my data. Type is numeric because there is a number. It is on a scale of 1 to 7. If you see the label, label is where I am defining that variable. So, first variable in my exercise was a two wheeler is affordable for use. So, this becomes the label is affordable. This is the affordability value, uh, label or the, or the affordability variable. Values, I have to define the values. Now, one means completely disagree and so on and so forth I have to define for all the scale. 2 is somewhat disagree add. 3 is disagree Fourth is neutral. Fifth is agree. Sixth is somewhat agree. And seventh is completely agree and I say ok and then I can copy this particular scale to all the 10 variables which I am trying to fit in. Now my variable sheet is ready. I go to the data view. The data which was given in exercise where I had fit in, in all these 20 respondents on this scale have been now converted into the data on the SPSS sheet where the same responses are now part of this table. Each column corresponds to one complete questionnaire. So, response respondent 1's responses are given here, respondent 2's are given here and so on and so forth. So, all 20 responses have been has been have been punched in into this system. Now, like I told yesterday, we go to the drop down menu on the top of this SPSS sheet. We go to analyze button and in analyze we get the options of all the analysis. Factor analysis is a data reduction technique. In some of the newer versions of SPSS, it is given as dimension redun reduction technique. So, do not get uh, confused by data reduction or dimension reduction, it is the same thing. We pick up factor analysis. Now, the decision window opens and SPSS is asking me how many variables you want to fit in into the factors. So, I pick up all the 10 variables and transfer them into the decision window. Now, clearly follow what I am doing now because these are steps which are important to do the factor analysis. I go to descriptives and I pick up KMO and Bartley's test. I click this button this because these statistics will give me the answer whether factor analysis was right or wrong. I go to extraction and I the default is principal component and the extraction is eigenvalues over 1 and maximum iterations for convergence 25 and I am happy with this, so I say continue. Though I can change any of these depending on what I want to do. Rotation, 
here I method it is said none by default I pick up very max and I will explain this also what is very max and I say ok and the answer has come from SPSS on the factor analysis. Let us take the output one by one. First table is the KMO and Bartley's test. KMO test is an index which defines the measure of sampling adequacy. Remember I told that ideally for any factor analysis the number of responses should be 4 to 5 times the number of variables then only factor analysis is a good analysis. KMO, KMO measure is an index which gives me this answer whether the factor analysis which I am doing right now is adequate. If this measure is above 0 0.5 the factor analysis is acceptable. Luckily in this case the KMO, KMO index is coming out to be 0 0.618 which is more than 0 0.5 and I, I, this factor analysis is acceptable. Second reading in this particular table is about Bartley's test of sphericity. Remember another thing which I told about factor analysis. Factor analysis is meaningful only when some of the variables are correlated among themselves. Bartley's test of sphericity test that condition. The null hypothesis for Bartley's test of sphericity is that none of the variables in this research are correlated. So, if the correlation matrix is made where all the all the variables are put on, on columns as well as rows, it will be an identity matrix where each variable will only have 100 percent correlation with itself that is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and on all the diagonals while it will have 0 correlation with all other variables. When Bartley's test of sphericity gives me an answer and I see its significant value and its significant is 0 0.000 which is less than 0 0.05 that means at 95 percent confidence level the null hypothesis is of this test is not accepted and it is the alternate hypothesis which is being accepted which says ye that yes there was a correlation between some of the variables. So, our factor analysis is good on both these accounts KMO as well as Bartley's test. Now, let us look at this table and this table tells us how many factors have been extracted by SPSS. First column gives me the number of original variables and it says the number of original variables were 10. When I see the reading which has come, the reading has come only for 3 of them. That means very clearly SPSS has converted these 10 original variables into 3 new factors and all these factors if I go to the last reading of this table it says cumulative percentage 80.346 which means 80 percent of the variance in this particular data is being explained by 3 factors which is a very good uh, start, which is a very good result because if I am able to explain more than 60 percent of variance in any data through factor analysis that is a good factor analysis because I am able to capture more than half of the I am able to explain more than half of the data and in this case it is 80 percent of the variance which is being explained. Next we go to component matrix. Number of components means how many factors have been extracted. Original components were 10 which are written here in the first column affordable, sense of freedom, economical, men's vehicle, feel powerful, friend jealous, feel happy to see the ad, comfortable ride, safe and 3 per, per people should be legally allowed to travel and now the components which have been created are only 3. If I take component number 1, the reading gives me the correlation between affordable and this factor which is 0 0.16 minus 0 0.3136. If I, if, I, if I square all of these, these 10 correlations and add 
I will get 3.883, which means in this particular table, which means factor one is explaining 3. Point, has an eigen value of 3.883 and is able to explain 38.8 percent of the total variance. Similarly, for fact, for factor two, if I do this square and plus it, I will I will get the figure of 2.777. And if I square all the figures in column number three, which is component number three, I get 1.375. These are the eigen values or the total variance which is being explained by each of these factors. Factor analysis from SPSS does not consider factors which have less than one eigen value because less than one means the factor is as good as an as a variable only. It is not explaining a great deal of variance. So, from the original set of ten variables, we are now down to Three factors which are explaining 80 percent of the total data. Now, component matrix in itself does not very clearly give us which variables are going into which factor. That final answer or or the identification of the factors clearly comes from rotated component matrix. If I if we look at this particular table and I now concentrate on column one of the factor one, and I see high values of the correlation between the variable and the factor, so I find variable number four, a man's vehicle has 0.97 correlation with one, feel powerful has 0.964 correlation with one. Friends jealous, 0.945 with one, and feel happy to see the ad, 0.971 in factor one. If now I see this result, I can very clearly understand that these variables are very closely matching, and from the customer's perspective, they are only one. All of them are talking about a macho kind of appeal and a sort of ego satisfaction. It's a man's vehicle. It's all about power. Feel powerful. Friends are jealous when they see, and I see. I feel happy to see the ad. All of them are talking about a particular behavior that people who have given this kind of reading or this kind of rating points are really looking at vehicle, two-wheeler as a man's vehicle, as a powerful vehicle. Now, if I look at factor number two, the Highly important and correlated variables which are coming here are comfortable ride, which has got 0.848, and three people legally allowed, sorry, safe, which is 0.8881. Both of them are related to design aspect. So factor one, what was it was talking about power of the vehicle. Factor two, on the other hand, is talking about Design of the vehicle, that vehicle should be comfortable and should be safe. And when I look at factor three, the variables which are coming strongly, having strong loading with factor three, are affordable 0.780, economical 0.594, and last variable, three people legally allowed to travel 0.874. This is clearly about economy of the vehicle. That means there is one set of customers. Who want to buy two wheelers because two wheelers are an economical way of conveyance? So, very clearly from the original set of ten decision variables, fact analysis has allowed me to identify three exclusive factors on which the respondents are evaluating any two wheeler. One is power aspect, second is design aspect, and third is economic aspect. These factors are exclusive to each other, and one thing very interesting is any variable which has got a high loading with one factor, it is it has that loading only with that factor, and it should not appear in other factors because factors 
within themselves should be consistent but with each other they should be as different as possible now let's understand the statistics which has come into this output if i can see the if you can see the screenshot factor basic equation for factor is factor is a linear combination of variables with different weights bartley's test of sphericity sphericity as i talked about is the test statistics used to examine the hypothesis that the variables are uncorrelated so the null hypothesis for this is that there is the the population correlation matrix is an identity matrix where each variable correlates perfectly with only itself and has zero correlation with other variables and if this test uh, in the factor analysis if the significant value comes less than 0.05 the null hypothesis is not accepted and alternate hypothesis is accepted and then only the factor analysis can be acceptable to the world communality communality is the amount of variance a variable shares with all variables this is also the proportion of variance explained by the common factor eigen value eigen value represents the total variance explained by each factor factor loadings are simple correlation between the variables and the factor matrix sorry factor loadings are simple correlation between variables and the factors the factor matrix gives us the factor loadings of all variables on the factors which have been extracted if i can show you the screenshot kmo factor scores are composite scores estimated for each respondent on the derived factors kmo measure of sampling adequacy kmo i have explained this thing also it tells whether the sample was adequate for this factor analysis and high value anything over 0.5 till 1 indicate that factor analysis was appropriate values below 0.5 implies that factor analysis was not appropriate and you have to have more responses from the market or from the respondents to do factor analysis another thing is scree plot scree plot is a plot of the eigen values against a number of factors screen if i can show you the screenshot the scree plot looks like this this scree plot taken from some different exercise tells me scree is the kink where this particular curve is, is having a dramatic difference in the shape and in this particular analysis third component onwards the eigen values become very small so for this particular exercise three factors should be taken up for discussion the objective of the factor analysis when we are now we are to talking about conducting the factor analysis and formulating the problem the objective of factor analysis should be identified why do we want to do data reduction at all secondly the variables to be included in the factor analysis should be specified based on past research i told this time thing earlier that a researcher when he goes out to the market first does lot of literature review talks to experts see the past research and creates an exclusive extensive list of data uh, data points on which he wants to check from the market and third point is appropriate sample size should be used as a rough guideline there should be at least 4 to 5 times as many very observations as there are variables Bartley's test of sphericity we have talked about and KMO we have we have talked about. Now I would like to show you the slides again, and uh, the method has to be understood. Remember when I when I was showing you the SPSS and showing you how to do factor analysis, the rotation the the extraction method we used was principal component analysis. in principal component analysis the total variance in the data is considered the diagonal of the correlation matrix consists of unities and full variance is brought into the factor matrix principal components analysis is recommended when the primary concern is to determine the minimum number of factors that will account for 
maximum variance in the data for use in subsequent multivariate analysis in marketing research this is the most preferred method because from the ex long list of data we extract the minimum number of uh, data points or factors which will by still do the purpose for us and explain most of the variance while in other researches like financial research or hr research we many many times use the next method which i will like to show you which says common factor analysis and in common factor analysis the factors are estimated uh, based only on the common variance if i can show you on the screen commonalities are inserted in the diagonal in the correlation matrix and this method is appropriate when the primary concern is to identify all the underlying dimensions and the common variances of interest how many factors should we consider one is known as a priori determination even before going into the analysis i know that i will limit myself to five factors this can be done because i have already gone through past researches and have seen that somewhere else in the world or somewhere in different markets for this but this similar kind of research five factors were extracted so i limit myself to five but the better method is determination based on eigen values which i did in my exercise only factors with eigen values greater than 1 are retained an eigen value represents the amount of variance associated with the factor hence only factors with a variance greater than 1 are are to be included any factor with less than 1 variance is no better than a single vari single variable now i also used a method called vary max for rotation what is rotation when i showed you the output if i should i like to show you the output of the factor analysis first is this the component matrix now component matrix is not able to give us very clear indicator of uh, the classification completely that which variable is going only into one factor it is a jumbled up kind of a matrix so that's why we do rotation through vary max and what is rotation rotation means that we rotate the axis of this graph or 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 the factors in such a way that the variables are clearly going towards one or the other other factor and clear cut distinction between the factors emerges factors become consistent within themselves and very different from each other no variable should be having a high loading with more than one factor i like to show you the very the procedure here the most common used method for rotation is the vary max procedure this is an orthogonal method of rotation that minimizes the number of variables with high loadings on a factor thereby enhancing the interpretability of the factors orthogonal rotation results in factors that are very uncorrelated the rotation is also can also be oblique when the axes are not maintained at right angles but right now we are talking about vary max procedure see what has happened in this this is the demonstration of this exercise that only original commonality factor matrix gives me variables like variable 2 which is coming in both the factors variable 4 which is coming in both the factors variable 5 which is coming in both the factors now i am in a fix that how do i identify factors but when i do rotation after rotation the rotated component matrix gives me a very clear cut picture that variable 1 variable 1 is only coming in factor 1 variable 3 is only coming in factor 1 variable 5 is only coming in factor 1 so factor 1 is has high loading from these three variables while the rest of the three variables 2 4 and 6 have high loading with factor number 2 and none of the variables are now jumbled up they are not coming in both the factors 
Now, a factor can be interpreted in terms of the variables which load high on it, which have high correlation with it. If if I look at the same output given my in my earlier slides, on the right side is the is the rotated component matrix of two components. As I said earlier, component one or factor one has high loading from variable one, variable three, variable five. And if you now look at the plot, you will find the x-axis demonstrates variable uh, sorry factor one. And variable one, variable three, and variable five are close to the x-axis, but very away from the y-axis. So rotation has made this distinction very clear. While on the, if you look at the component matrix, you will find variable two, variable four, and variable six have high loading with very compo component two or factor two. And again, we see in this same in this graph now that very the factor two is given by this y-axis. And all these three variables, v4, v2, and v6, are highly correlated and are coming into this particular factor. This, friends, was an exercise and demonstration of factor analysis. I like to now. Reiterate factor analysis through another exercise. If I can have the screenshots, then we will see. Now, this exercise is about perception of jet airways. Private air domestic airline operators raised their airfare in December two thousand. Indian Airlines the government owned carrier was the only domestic airline which did not follow suit information available which is the sources economic times showed that people still prefer to fly jet airways hence a study was carried out to ascertain the reasons for the above preference as according to indian airlines officials domestic flyers are price conscious customers now factor analysis will tell whether actually people are only looking at prices or they are looking at something else the study consisted of 20 respondents who had recently flown with jet airways they were asked to indicate on a seven point scale one is completely agree to some seven completely disagree their agreement or disagreement with the set of 10 statements relating to their perceptions and attitudes of the airlines the 10 statements are as follows i will read them out they which means jet airways are always on time bracket on time that's just one word to describe this particular variable this will help me when i go to spss to input this data the seats are very comfortable i love the food they provide their air hostesses are very beautiful my boss stroke friend flies with the same airline the airlines have younger aircrafts I get the advantage of a frequent flyer program. It, which means the flight timings suits my schedule. My mom feels safe, safe. Sorry, when I fly jet, flying jet complements my lifestyles and social standing in the society. The answers given by the twenty respondents on a scale of one to seven are given below. So again, like my earlier exercise, I can show you that this table. all the 10 variables are given in the top heading of the columns and 1 2 3 to 20 are the number of responses respondents and for each respondent whatever they responded on a scale of 1 to 7 for these variables is given here so now i go to factor analysis uh, i go to spss for doing this factor analysis first like i told last time i'll go to the variable view and i will first define all the variables 
Remember, in my word exercise, I had shown you one word for each variable. These are these words: on time, comfort, food, hostess, boss, aircraft is young, frequent flyer programs, it's on schedule, my mom likes it, and lifestyle matches. I can give the labels here. they are always on time i have to define the values and i say comp one is completely agree two is agree three is somewhat agree fourth is neutral position fifth is somewhat somewhat disagree sixth is disagree and seventh is completely this agree i say add and i say okay and now i can copy this particular scale onto all the rest nine variables so this is done remember when i was talking about the last exercise i described this 1 to 7 scale but i made a error at that time the scale the direction should be very clear if one is completely this completely agree two is agree three is somewhat agree so it's a decreasing level of agree agreement last time when i talked about this particular exercise i said one is completely agree two is somewhat agree and three is agree that's a wrong kind of a uh, sequencing so the scale the direction should be very clear that one is higher agreement second is slightly lower agreement three is even more lower agreement so once we have once we have very clearly defined all these scale and these variables i go to the data view and i put i input all the data from the respondents respondent number 1's opinion on all these 10 points have been input here and for all 20 have been given here now remember what i so i'm just following those steps so that you can clearly understand now i go to analyze i go to data reduction and i pick up factor and then spss is asking me which variables you want to input into factor so i am picking up all the 10 variables and i am transferring them into the decision window descriptives i click kmo and bartley's test say continue extraction principal component extraction is what i want eigen value is also what i want maximum attrition for convergence is 25 i'll explain here that sometimes if the number of variables is very high or the correlation and uh, correlation between vari variables is so that clearly factors are not being extracted even in 25 times this rotation is happening you can increase it to any number and probably after more than 25 your factor analysis will give you clear cut factors we say continue rotation very max i can also have plots here if i want to save them as variables i have to click scores now what this will do is it will save the new factors as variables remember one of the things which i told about factor analysis is that it can be used later on for all multivariate analysis so you should have a mechanism where automatically spss stores the extracted factors 
and they become your new variables for your further analysis like discriminant or logistic regression and now i say okay and what i get is this output now let's look at the screen first we have to check the kmos and bar list bar list test kmo measure of sampling adequacy is coming out to be 0.518 which is more than 0.5 and this is acceptable Bartlett's test again the significance of this test is coming out to be point less than 0.05 that means null hypothesis is being not being accepted and it is the alternate hypothesis which is accepted that means doing factor analysis was okay some of these variables are correlated we go to the third table of this output and all the 10 components original are given here initially there were 10 and now we have see, we see that three are the factors which have been extracted by this particular exercise and these three factors are explaining 80% more than 80% which is a good enough resu result for me if i now go to rotated component matrix i like to see extract and understand what kind of factors are coming out let's look at this rotated component matrix component 1 which is factor 1 and see which variables have high re, high correlation or high loading with this now very clearly variable number 1 on time and aircraft young both of them have 0.954 and 0.959 correlation so i will pick up these two variables and say this factor is giving me the ans is giving me the re result where people who want on time performance and aircraft young is also correlated that means young aircrafts will have less maintenance and will have less of operational delays and they will always be on time so this is about this probably has been given by those respondents who want efficiency of the airline as the main thing and they fly jet because it is very efficient so this factor is a efficiency factor even food is coming here so variable number 1 variable number 3 and variable number 5 number 6 are all coming in factor 1 when we look at factor 2 it is the fourth variable which is hostess and frequent flying this is about joy of flying so people who want the pleasure of flying they prefer jet and third kind of people are comfortable and schedule now these people are about these people understand the pain these are frequent flyers and they understand that jet has got a very comfortable uh, journey and their schedule of flights is also very good now this is the third kind so very clearly the market or the respondents who are flying are selecting jet based on three different parameters one is their efficiency second is the quality of their in how in 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 flight service and third is the efficiency or the comfortable journey and schedule and whereas indian airline officials believe that most of the people are price conscious but this factors is giving a very surprising answer that price is not the answer none of these very factors is talking about price these are talking about very different things which is being provided by jet and not being provided by indian airlines so this my friend was in general what a factor analysis does and in marketing research we use them we use this analysis so many times because 
I am repeating myself because many times, most of the time, researchers pick up a very long list of decision variables and go to the market with that, while the respondents or the customers really don't think on so many dimensions. So, factor analysis allows us to do dimension reduction. It allows us to identify a new smaller set of uncorrelated variables or factors to replace the original set and thirdly, these newly generated factors can be used for further analysis, further analysis and like discriminant line or, or the regression line. It is very logical that if we do not do factor analysis and start doing a multivariate analysis like regression or discriminant on a long list of 20, 30 variables, that line will be an unmanageable kind of a equation where it will not give us very clear cut answers to uh, for, for companies or even for academicians to understand that what needs to be done. But once these dimensions are reduced to 4, 5 strong dimensions which by and large tell me what is happening in the market, then this any regression line or any discriminant line that we are creating gives me very good results and are their inter Predictability becomes very high. Now, I would like to summarize whatever statistics we have gone through. One is Bartley's test of sphericity, which is a test statistic used to examine the hypothesis that the variables are uncorrelated in this population. Another hypothesis is that no variables have no correlation with each other, but once this test is beaten through by looking at the significance value coming out of SPSS or any other method, we will we, we can say that there were correlation between some of the variables and factor analysis makes a lot of sense. And second uh, statistics was KMO. KMO is an index which tells us whether the sample was adequate for factor analysis. Third was commonality. Commonality is the amount of variance a variable shares with other variables. Eigenvalue. Eigenvalue represents the total variance explained by each factor. And remember that we are, when we say factors, we generally pick up factors which have more than one eigenvalue because any factor less than one eigenvalue is almost like a variable. It does not give us a combination of variables, while factors ideally are linear combination of variables. So, they should have a higher eigenvalue. Factor loadings are correlation between the variable which is going inside each factor and factor matrix which is in SPSS it is said to be component matrix or rotated component matrix. It demonstrates the factor loadings to of all the variables with the factors and allows us to identify which factor has which variable inside it. And a script plot is there. Remember about the principal component analysis, that is the method to, to identify minimum factors which can explain maximum variance. Remember that eigenvalues should be more than one for factors to be identified. Also remember rotation. Rotation gives us uh, the clear cut clarity that which variable is going into which factors and variables are really not jumbled up. We use Verimax procedure generally which is an orthogonal rotation and Verimax clearly takes some variables into one variable into one factor and takes them out of the other factors. And this is finally, the screenshot where I told you how these factors are looking at looking when we look at the graphical representation of this factor analysis. So, thank you sir and thank you the audience for patient listening and I hope that you had a good uh, experience today and were able to understand in some details what is factor analysis. Okay, we talked about the factor analysis and there are uh, brief uh, if you can do in a two or three minutes about determinant analysis because you were, you were supposed to. Okay, uh, uh, we, we were supposed to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Discriminant analysis is a technique for prediction. It is a classification technique. For example, a bank wants to uh, identify somebody who has applied for loan should be given a loan or not. That means, 
the bank wants to classify that person into a risk category whether it's a high risk category or it's a low risk category so bank based on their existing data of customers who have been paying the loans regularly or not paying the loans regularly can make a dis discriminant which is a equation and from that equation they can input the data of any new applicant and the equation will give, give them the result whether this person is likely to be a high risk category or a low risk category mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's a quite an elaborate kind of a statistical technique and it requires in itself a complete session so probably sometime later on we yeah. will talk about discriminant analysis sir certainly we'll do that but before we end the lecture we'd like to know in brief how will you explain the factor analysis and its purposes in just two or three lines so that a student can get yes uh, i'll take an example uh, i want to understand why people go to big bazaar and not go to a kirana store why people are shifting so there are when i go to researches i find that there are 30 40 50 reasons which different different researchers have come out in their research so i make a list of 50 different 50 of these elements and then go to the market and i talk to people who have gone to big bazaar and i i take their opinion whether what were the things they liked about big bazaar why did they shift to big bazaar from a kirana store and they on all those 40 50 elements they give me an answer on a scale mm -hmm. but in reality they will not be thinking about 50 different points they might be thinking about four or five major things that why they should go to big bazaar probably it is because of store ambience or prices or schemes or closeness to them so 50 is is a very unmanageable kind of a number for even big bazaar if i go to after this research to big bazaar and say these are the 50 points they will laugh at me and they will say that please tell us which are the important things right and that's what factor analysis does to me it will manage the, the, those 50 and reduce them to probably five or six key points okay. rather than those 50 uh, different points and it will be still be good enough for me okay so uh, where we uh, establish cause and effect relationships there uh, factor analysis the does not give a cause and effect relationship but help us to uh, uh, prioritize the cause number of yes it, it identifies the hmm. underlying patterns okay so any out of those 50 hmm. if the customer is looking at 10 of them as same hmm. so those 10 will become one factor okay. if he looks at another five as same hmm. for example i might have put low price hmm. and i scheme as two different thing while customer thinks them as one okay. they both are talking about e economical price to him hmm. so he will give a same kind of answer to both of these things while in my researchers mind they might be different Okay, it, uh, in one uh, line we can say that it establishes the pattern. Pattern and it know. reduces the no. long list of data to a manageable list of variables. Okay. Which are in itself are very similar to each other. Okay, so it's a very helpful friends mm -hmm. and I hope uh, you have understood uh, in detail what is factor analysis, where we do use it and what is its importance. So with this board we conclude the lecture i thank all of you for watching the lecture and on your behalf i thank dr asif jameer for giving such an insightful lecture on factor analysis in sps thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much